Good morning, everyone. It's Phil Wade from Dalton Wade Real Estate Group, and today I'm joined with Amy, Talia, and Julio is uh, holding the uh, phone, looking good. And uh, so today we're going to talk about, uh, you know, important dates um, in your transaction, um, and um, you know, sometimes what happens, and you know, the market's getting good, and you know, business has really picked up as we've gotten into 2017, and. Uh, several agents have, you know, two, three, four, or five even, you know, kind of pending transactions. And, um, you know, just from my own experience in the past, um, I have no pending transactions, but hopefully I will. Um, but sometimes when you have that many, um, the dates start to uh, run together and get blurred and, you know, the possibility of actually um, missing a date uh, that's important to your client. Um, uh, goes up in terms of its probability. So kind of a while ago I had developed a spreadsheet that basically, you know, you just kind of, um, you know, drop everything in as that transaction goes under agreement and then you just kind of look at it and there, you know, you can't kind of really miss uh, the important dates. So what are the important dates and kind of what are the things that need to be on that spreadsheet? And I'm more than happy to send that to everybody if, um, you know, if they, uh, if they're so inclined. So obviously the buyer and seller name is good. Um, you know, the property address, so you know which property it is. Um, you know, the uh, contract effective date, obviously that's important. Everything, all the dates after that, you know, go off, go off of the effective date. So the effective date is the day you sign the contract. That's day zero. The next day is, is day one. Um, you, so, um, and then when the first deposit is due, um, often we're acting as buyer's agent and, you know, um, we have three days either for us to get the funds to the title company or for the client to, you know, bring the money by, wire the money by. If the money doesn't get there, then, you know, the contract, um, you know, can be voided and the seller could, you know, basically get out. Um, sometimes there's a second deposit date, um, which again is usually after the home inspection. Maybe they did $1,000 down when they started and then some additional money once they got through the home inspection. Um, the home inspection, um, so typically it's seven, 10, 15, whatever kind of gets negotiated and agreed upon. So you have that date on your, your, um, you know, your spreadsheet. Um, and again, why that's important is that um, once that date goes by, the home inspection contingency is um, you know, no longer in force. Um, and the client, you know, in essence, has to buy the house, you know, as is. So that that they we've talked about that at length numerous other times um, in terms of you know the inspection. Uh, let me just flip flip the page here. Um, then we have the termite inspection. Um, you know, it's always advisable to um, you know to do a termite inspection. Um, the only time it actually would pop up, I mean, it's. Um, it's not something required um, by any lender unless your client is VA. So the VA requires a termite inspection um, to be submitted to the lender and be part of the file. And then that termite inspection has to come back um, clean, meaning you know no evidence, no anything, basically. If there's any evidence, then um, it either has to be repaired or the house has to be treated. But you do need to get that um, you know, termite inspection, you know, to, you know, to the lender so that the loan can kind of proceed. Um, the appraisal, uh, if we're working with a buyer and if we're, you know, representing the seller the, and the person's getting financing non-cash, the appraisal has to be completed. Um, you know, if you're the listing agent and it seems like the appraisal is taking a long time, you know, a red flag should go up. Um, so it's more, a yes or no as opposed to a date yeah the appraisal's been scheduled you know that's happening and hopefully you know the loan is proceeding you know on course um, the FHA VA appraisal is a little bit different um, than if it's conventional because possibly there's an inspection repair list you know that can come out of that so we want to make sure that w once that appraisal is back we ask the lender I had one this is probably uh, a while ago now, right when I first started in Florida, where um, she was a VA buyer and um, the lender forgot to, you know, mention that there were a couple things 
I didn't ask. I thought, it, you know, they would have told me. Um, and then it was right before the closing, and then the seller didn't want to repair the stuff, and basically, you know, Phil ended up having to repair it. I mean, it wasn't a lot of money, but still, you know, it did eat into my commission, where if I had had my little spreadsheet, I might have asked. Um, so you want to ask, when that appraisal comes back for FHA, VA, you want to ask, are there any repair items? Because, you know, they're not going to be able to get the loan unless those get fixed and, you know, the house has to be, you know, re-inspected. Um, and then the financing contingency, um, like the last day of that, the last day that your client has to have um, the loan or be pretty certain. You know, again, we've had several trainings on this, so I'm not going to go into, you know, a ton of detail, but basically, you know, there's typically if you leave it blank, it's 45 days, um, but it's actually the lesser of 40 day, 45 days or seven days before closing. So typically it's going to be the seven days before closing. So if the closing's in 30 days, you have it on your spreadsheet, 23 days, I need to make sure, you know, my client's got the loan. If they don't have the loan, um, you know, you can basically go naked and kind of let the contingency expire. Hopefully they get the financing and there's no issue. It seems like there's some major stuff, like the appraisal's not back. Um, you probably need to be, um, you know, asking for an extension. Um, you know, certainly call me. We can kind of go through what, what the best steps are because, and again, this is really where the importance of a good lender um, and a lender that kind of meets the dates. You know, when you're, when you're setting up, um, you know, the offer, you know, the closing date, is, is a date that, you know, the lender um, should tell you they feel very comfortable meeting. You know, it shouldn't be like, okay, we put this date down and they can't meet it, we're only gonna cause ourselves, you know, problems. And again, um, you know, when you start asking for extensions on the financing, the seller gets nervous, you know, are these people gonna get their loan? And um, maybe they have a backup offer. Maybe they have a backup cash offer that's higher than your offer. They're looking to get rid of you. So again, they can't get rid of you if you perform on the dates. But if the lender misses the dates, they don't give you the extension, all that effort, um, and it didn't, it didn't close. So you know, again, we talked about this working with a good lender um, is very, very important. And you know, we know several that kind of deliver on time. So and then the last date is the closing date. Um, hopefully everything you know is on schedule. The lender performs. The title company performs. Um, the date is uh, um, you know and it closes on time. Ty is just coming off a transaction where there were some delays, uh, really around the title company, um, but in the end it got done. Julio just closed one and uh, um, it all closed you know right on time, very smooth. So sometimes they're smooth, sometimes they're harder. It's just, you know, Talia needs an easy one. Uh, <laughs> so that's, that's, you know, sometimes they're easy, sometimes they're hard. Um, but ultimately the goal is to, you know, do a good job for your client and, and get the transaction closed. So, so those are the key dates. You know, again, I mean, at least for me, I got one deal under agreement. I can keep those dates in my mind, um, you know. But when you start to have two, three, four, five, even more, you know, kind of pending transactions, trust me, they all start to blur together and then, oh, is it this date for that property, you know, and, and then, um, you know, things can go can go sideways and, you know, the service level not be there. So it's a handy little tool to kind of keep, uh, keep everybody organized. You can look, you know, you don't have to look at it daily, but, you know, every couple of days you open it up, you look, okay, here's the dates, blah, 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 and everything goes well. So any questions? Anybody with any questions in Periscope land? Alrighty, thanks for uh, thanks for tuning in. Hopefully, as I mentioned, if anybody wants a copy of the uh, spreadsheet, certainly send that over. Just email me or text me, and uh, we'll see you next week. What do I have to hit? Just I think swipe it down.